Today we're going to talk about parallelograms. Parallelograms is another one of our quadrilaterals. Specifically, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Those sides are actually opposite each other. Notice in the picture how the top and bottom lines of the par parallelogram have two arrows and the side lines have one arrow. That means that the top two are parallel and the side two are parallel. Let's see some examples here or do a little discovery on what a parallelogram is. First off, as we just talked about, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. I have a list of steps here that talk about these uh, relationships. So first it says measure the length of the four sides. So I'll go ahead and do that. So as you notice, AB and CD are both 4.26 centimeters and AD and BC are 2.18. So the first question here says what is the relationship you notice about the sides? And the first relationship we realize is that the opposite sides are congruent. Step three here says move a vertex of the parallelogram. Remember, a vertex is a corner. So I'm going to grab A. Notice as I move it, A, B, and C, D are changing, but they're changing exactly the same amount. If I did that from C, you'll notice now the two sides have changed in size, but they're still the same. Do the relationships you stated in number two still hold true? And yes, they are. They are all still congruent. Next, we need to measure the four angles. You'll see I, see I have the four angles on here, and I've put them close to where they actually are at. So the CDA is the 78, ABC is this 78, so on and so forth. Question, what relationships do you notice about the angles? There are actually two relationships that we want to see. First is the opposite angles, which would be ABC and CDA are congruent, and BAD, BAD and BCD are also equal or congruent. The next relationship is a little bit trickier to see, but if you added together the two angles on the right, angle ABC and angle BCD, you'll notice that they add up to 180 degrees. They are actually same side interior or consecutive interior angles, which we learned earlier means that they need to be supplementary, and they indeed are. We've answered question 6b. What is the relationship between A and B? That would be this angle up here and this angle over here. If I actually go and do this, you'll notice I have the calculation. BAD is 102.2, ABC is 78.8. Here in the pink, I have them combined to be 180 degrees. If I change the vertex, notice all of the angles are changing in their measurement but the relationships are holding. The opposite angles are congruent, and the sum of the consecutive interior angles maintains 180 degrees. So no matter where I move it, I still have the relationship of 180 degrees. So all of our relationships are holding true. Now lastly, it says to move the parallelogram so one, azure, one angle measures 90 degrees. I now have them all, or excuse me, one angle at 90 degrees. What is the measure of the other three angles? They are also all 90 degrees. This is a characteristic that should be true because remember, opposite angles should be congruent. We have that. Consecutive angles should be equal to 180, which we also have for that. So there are some of our characteristics of a parallelogram. Properties of a parallelogram. Here we go. First off, opposite sides are congruent. Next, opposite angles are congruent. Next, consecutive angles are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. Then the last one we just showed, or I just showed you in the picture, if one 
right angle is present, then all angles are right angles. So in a parallelogram, if we have one right angle, we have four right angles. Now this one we didn't actually have in the picture, but we have diagonals bisect each other. So that means the two diagonals cut each other into equal pieces. And lastly, one diagonal, so if you draw in one of your diagonals, you actually are creating two congruent triangles. These last two properties, we'll be doing some homework and some exercises to understand how those two actually work, but make sure you pay close attention to those because those are the properties that are often missed when people see questions relating to parallelograms. Here's an example. Find the measure of angle X, W, Z, and the measure of angle X, W, Y in parallelogram W, X, Y, Z. Let's start with the easier of the two of them, and that is X, W, Z. So that would be this angle right here. Okay. We learned from the properties of parallelograms that opposite angles are congruent. Well, if you'll notice here, this angle down here and this angle up here are our opposite angles. What that allows us to say is that the measure of angle X, W, Z is 120 degrees because that's what the angle in the bottom corner adds up to. The other question of what is x, w, y equal is a little bit harder, but what we need to remember is that we have two congruent triangles and we have some parallel lines. We have this transversal, we have these two parallel lines, which makes this angle and this angle alternate interiors. That means that angle 50 can go in both of those spots. So X, W, Y would also be 50 degrees. Our next question is find the value of A in the parallelogram W, X, Y, Z. Well, if we go back to our properties of a parallelogram, it says opposite sides are congruent. Well, we want to find the measurement of the A up here. Well, we actually have a pair of opposite sides. So we know that opposite sides are congruent, which makes 2A equal to 30. Divide by 2, and A equals 15. Now there's a lot more examples we can do, but you have the basics of what we need to do to understand or excuse me, parallelograms. The key to parallelograms is understanding this group of properties. Opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary. If you have one right angle, then you have all right angles. The diagonals will always bisect each other. And if you draw in one diagonal, you are creating two congruent triangles. So make sure you look these over whenever you have a question on parallelograms because these are the properties that will help you get your answers.